Blair of the Mounties, a story of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. We present the seventh episode in Blair of the Mounties. Let us picture for a moment the beauty of the North Country in the fall. The still, hazy days of Indian summer. The scarlet flame of the maple leaves against the deep green of the spruce. The quiet lakes, shining like jewels in the calm sunshine. A vast, silent land, where there are no cities, no crowds. A land that draws men back to it, from all the busy turmoil of the outer world. Well, I guess this is Fort McAllister. Looks to be a landing over there. What do you say, Doctor? Yes, yes, that's it. Better turn in, George. Ah, this is the life, Catherine. Just look at that long stretch of river. How quiet it is in the sunshine. Hmm. I hope you're satisfied. Now we've arrived at the place you're always talking about. I hope we get a decent place to sleep. Oh, come now, Catherine. It'll do you good to rough it a little. This is just what you need after all those parties in New York. Personally, I'll be glad when we get back to civilization. Hello. Who's that old gent on the bank? Good day, Dave. Uh, we're looking for Mr. McGregor, the Hudson Bay factor. Well, no. I'm Angus McGregor. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, well, we're up here on a hunting trip, Mr. McGregor. My name's Manning. We have a letter from Stuart, your company agent in New York. Ah, aye. Ah, glad to meet you, sir. I had word for Stuart. Ah, good. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Gibson and Mrs. Gibson. Who are you, ma'am? How do you do? How do you do, sir? Will you know, come ashore and uh, step over to the fort? Well, thanks. Come on, Kate. Gracious, yes. I am glad to get out of that wretched canoe. All right. Oh, uh, coming, Doctor? No, I think I'll sit here a while and smoke my pipe. You two run along. Oh, all right. Well, Mr. McGregor, how's the hunting up here? Ah, uh, there's plenty of it. Elk and mule deer and caribou. And then there's swarms of geese and duck. And all the fishing you'll want in the lake. Mm, that's the stuff. But how about beaver and otter and so on? Ah, <laughs> no, Mr. Manning. The season's no open. It's too early. You cannot touch the beaver. What? But say, what's to stop us from picking up a few specimens away up here in this wilderness? Mm, we'll certainly offense to you. But I wouldn't have betrayed it. You'll hear the mounted police after you, quick as a flash. They're awful efficient, you can. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I'm not figuring to break the law, understand. Oh, I've heard of the mounted police, of course. <laughs> Rather a romantic lot with that comic opera uniform of theirs. <laughs> I will. You'll find there's nothing romantic about them when it comes to police work. Well, I suppose a ten-dollar bill would loosen things up some, oh, eh? Oh, man, be careful what you say. If one of the laddies in the red coats puts his hand on you, uh, the money and influence in the world wouldn't save you. Wish no. Here's one of the police, the new. Hello, Angus. Yeah, good morning, Sergeant. Shake hands with Mr. Manning. He's a while up here for the hunting. Glad to meet you, Mr. Manning. Hmm. How are you, Sergeant? <laughs> well, well. All the majesty of the law, eh? <laughs> Anything I can do for you, Mr. Manning? Well, not at present. You and I will have to get better acquainted. I may want a little information. That'd be of service, Mr. Manning. Well, Mr. Manning, bring the lady up to the fort, and uh, I'll be seeing you later on. All right, Mr. McGregor. Sergeant, I was uh, just uh, wondering about the young hunting party that went up to the Cedar Lake yesterday. Funny you should say that. I've been wondering about them too. Eh? What do you think of them? Oh, I don't know. I like Dr. Gibson very much. Aye, he looks like a fine man. He's a famous surgeon, they tell me. And a real sportsman. Yes, the sort of man one likes to see up here. That fellow Manning got on my nerves a bit. Hmm. I wonder why the doctor brought him up here. Yeah, I'm thinking it was the wife's doing. You know, I didn't like him myself. And he's, he's, he's awful friendly with Mrs. Gibson. Yes, of course, he's more his own age. You know, Sergeant, I, I hate to be talking about a woman. But there's something that's uh, no just right about Mrs. Gibson. Oh, well, it's no funeral of ours. She's just a spoiled city woman, used to luxury and admiration. Mm, I'm thinking there's more to it than that. What do you mean, Angus? Oh, Nathan, of course, Sergeant, but... Uh, well, I wouldn't have wanted anything to happen. You see, I'm responsible to the company. 
and I just wanted to put you on your guard. Yeah, but I don't see why... Well, what... no, uh, now you do this for me, Sergeant. Just keep an eye on that party in case anything happens. Certainly, Angus. I had half a mind to anyway. Joe the Indian has a trap line up at Cedar Lake. He's up there every day getting ready for winter. I'll talk to him. Fine. That's all I want. My, my, that white fish tasted good. Oh, it wasn't so bad. If only everything wasn't so sticky. Oh, I haven't had a decent bath for a week. How much longer do we stay here, Henry? Why, we've only just got here, Catherine. Uh, why don't you try a swim in the lake? The water's beautiful. Goodness, me swim in that cold water? Nothing doing. No, all right. I, I tell you, let's go down to the pool above the rapids. You know there are a couple of beavers working there? The cutest little beggars you ever saw. Oh, for heaven's sakes, go on and leave me in peace. I want to read. Oh, all right, my dear, all right. I I'll be back in about half an hour. Don't hurry. Beavers, huh? <laughs> Picture me crawling through the grass to look at beavers. <laughs> oh, hello, George. Hello, sweetness. Daddy gone? Yes, he's gone. For heaven's sake, shut the door. He's gone to look at the beavers. Well, what are you flying the storm signals for? Anything the matter? Matter. Everything's the matter. You know, I detest this filthy country just as much as Henry raves about it. Do you hear me? I'm sick of it. Morning, noon, and night, all I hear is beautiful scenery, beautiful sunsets, beautiful nights. Oh, give me a cigarette before I choke. Well, well, lady, you sure got a full head of steam on. Well, when are you going to do something? You know what we came up here for. Now, easy, bright eyes, easy. What's the use of blowing off? Well, why don't you get busy? That's all right. I'm working on it, but we've got to look out for that sergeant. You're not afraid of him, are you? Afraid? Well, no, but he's no fool. No, he's a different friend to the men one usually meets. I tried to make up to him at the fort, but there was nothing doing. Yes, I noticed that. Oh, well, it was nothing serious, George. He just looked right through me with those gray eyes of his. Mm, guess I'm not. He's my. He's not my sort. I suppose it's because you and I are both so rotten that we get along together. Well, that's all right with me, baby. Say, you checked up on that will? Everything goes to you? Oh, sure. I checked up in New York. It's all mine. If anything happens to Henry. Okay. And say, don't get so sore at Henry. Just kid him along. See? Oh, all right. Leave it to me. Look out. Here he comes. Oh. Well, 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 Catherine. Are you still reading? My, but there's a beautiful moon. Yes, I was admiring it through the window, Henry. That's right, my dear. You know, the only way to real happiness is to be conscious of the beauty around you. Hello, is that you, Kate? Yes, I heard that call of yours. What do you want? Listen, that Indian they put on to watch us is gone, headed up the river for the fort. I'm wise to their game, and now's our chance. Oh, not tonight, George. Yes, tonight, right now. Oh, heavens. What What do you want me to do? Just stay out. Duck around to the back of the cabin, see? I'll get him out. Leave it all to me. Well, all right, but don't slip up on this. You know what it means if you do. Beat it. Get out of sight. Oh, all right. Doctor? Doctor? Yes, yes? What is it, George? It's, it's Catherine. She's headed for the pool. The pool? Uh, uh, Catherine? Uh, why? Uh... Well, hurry, Doctor. She's half crazy. No telling what she'll do. Now, you go ahead. You know the way. Good heavens, yes. Yes. Come, quickly. Follow me, George. You... You sure she went this way, George? Yes, yeah, sure. Hurry up, Doctor. All right. All right. Uh, there. There's the pool right ahead. Now, take a look over the bank. Here. Here, Manny, what, what? He's gone. Hey, open up, quick. Well, George, what happened? Just as I told you. It's okay, girly. Works like a charm. All the police in the world will never find out a thing. Well, tell me, George. Oh, I've got to know. How did you manage it? Why, simple enough. You remember that stuff that Henry made up for putting animals to sleep when he took them out of a trap? No, what was it? Well, he had it in a blue bottle on the shelf. Chloroform, mostly. But it acts instantly. <laughs> Henry told me it would put a man out in four seconds. Get the idea? But that wouldn't kill anybody, you poor simp. I know, I know. 
Well, he was ahead of me. When he leaned over the bank, I gave him the works on the handkerchief. He went out like a light. Then I pushed him over the bank. Saw him go over the rapids. Uh, he drowned before he came to. Pretty neat, eh, girlie? Oh, shut up! Get me a drink, for heaven's sake. Oh, all right, all right. Here you are. Take a good one. Pretty soon we'll miss Henry, see? Then we'll drift back to the fort and say he's lost. When they find him, there won't be a scrap of evidence to tie us up with it. All right. I hope it's that easy. You better clear out now. I want to figure things out. All right, Kitty. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> Mon Sergeant. Are you sure of this? Dead sure, Angus. Uh, but you, you haven't any evidence. I haven't, eh? You wait and see. But Sergeant, you know this is serious. They're guests of the company. Oh, yes? Well, they'll soon be guests of the government. Look out. Here they come. Good evening, Mr. Manning. Evening, Mrs. Gibson. Listen, Sergeant. I've got very serious news for you. Very? Yes. Dr. Gibbons has been missing from our camp since last night. We've searched everywhere. Men? Yes, you see, Sergeant, I didn't worry yesterday. My husband's off and out all day. But when he didn't return last night, I got anxious. Yes, I see. Come on now, Sergeant. Don't look so solemn. We want action. Well, the doctor may be hurt in the bush somewhere. I want a search party. Now, how about it? Just a minute. Uh, Mrs. Gibson, will you step outside a minute? I want to talk to Mr. Manning. But I don't see... Sure, go ahead, Kate. I want to talk to him, too. All right. Now, Mr. Manning, what did you want to say? Just this. You get busy with that search party, or I'm going to have a complaint to make when I get back to Ottawa. What sort of a complaint? Well, what's the idea of putting that Indian to spy on our camp? That, Mr. Manning, was because I was concerned for the safety of Dr. Gibson. The what? Say, what is this comic policeman stuff, anyway? Furthermore, I have information that you made an attempt on the life of Dr. Gibson at 11.40 last night. Why, you're crazy. That Indian went back to the fort last night. Unfortunately for you, there was another Indian, not 20 yards from you, when you pushed Dr. Gibson into the water. It's a dirty lie. I never did it. Why, you're trying to frame me. Look out. Stop him, Angus. Look out now. Manning. You can't keep me here. You can't prove it. Just a minute. Manning, there's somebody here I want you to meet. Come in, Dr. Gibson. Henry. Henry! Alive. Yes. No thanks to you. George Manning, I arrest you for the attempted murder of Dr. Gibson. Anything you say may be used against you as evidence. But listen, I want a lawyer. Go on. Get inside. You have heard the seventh episode in Blair of the Mounties. Our next chapter portrays a detective adventure of Sergeant Blair in England, entitled The Hamilton Mystery. <laughs> 